Let's start with the uh, difficult tenth studio album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> different, different to the difficult second, third, and fourth, and fifth, and sixth. I mean, just how difficult was it? This, or was it really? Was it okay just to come together this time? Because there's been a few years l yeah. that you've been doing your own sort of things. Yeah. 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 No, it was. It was. Um, I mean, it was incredibly easy. You know, actually, <laughs> there I hate you go. To tell Blown you. that theory. Blown that theory. It was. It was a difficult ninth album. Actually, the last one was a very difficult one. But now this one was. Um, you know, we weren't even sure what's going to happen. But Andrew and I got together and. We started writing, and as we wrote, we'd record it every night, and we, we threw out the idea of demos, and just started making the album really as we wrote. So we'd be in a hotel room, and you know, within the hour of finish the song, we'd have it sort of recorded, and two or three of the songs were just out of hotel room. So it just went great. How different was working that way to the stuff that you've done in the past? Well, we just, you know, we didn't try to recreate. What what Andrew and Michael had written, or yeah. any of us had written in the past, you know, this this album just went bang, bang, bang. You know, yeah. and it was everyone had heard the record before we went into the studio to make it, and basically we all knew what we had wanted to do and had to do, sort of thing. So it just made it really quick, and it, in, in a sense, it keeps it keeps a certain attitude from the band yeah. mm -hmm. that we've you know we've tried to find in other, in other records that found just it before in places, happen. but it's just it, yeah. Well, this is it's what the difference is that it's how you arrive at the first take. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how you think about it. It's instead of it's just like look, this is what we are. This is what we do. Just keep it raw and and, and mm. go for it. You know, mm. first take. I mean, we did made the out. We did sixteen tracks in eight days, mm. you know, and that was it. We spent the last five years putting out, out an album, nearly you know, four albums in five years, and we. And in some ways, that's too much, you know. And it lacks direction. And you're sort of just throwing it out all the time, and you don't. People don't have time to ca catch up with it or understand it. And I, and I think we just disappeared for a couple of years. It has been a long break in in a, in a sense. Uh, for us as people because we, we, in a sense, I think probably should have taken some longer breaks earlier on, uh, but we never really did yeah. um, as a group. And I think therefore this seems like a very long break, whereas other friends, musicians I have, whatever, is a fairly normal break actually to take between albums, you know. Do you think that's the way then to kind of get excited about the music again? Cause I, you know, obviously we're yeah. going to talk about that mm. as we go on, but having been together mm. for the length of time that you have, mm. yeah, just how well, do I mean, you generate that? Well, I think you just, I mean, I think you just get excited, but if you, ha if you, if you think you've got some good stuff, then you're going to get excited, hopefully. If you've still got anything going on up here and the band's still got its dynamic and you still actually do want to play music together, which we do, you know, regardless, um, then yeah, then, then the, you know, good songs makes for a happy band, <laughs> makes for excitement, you know what I mean? It's like a relief for me. Um, Nexus is like a drug to me. It's like I, I need it. Uh, it's, a, it's a vehicle for me to express what I do best and what I love the most. And um, I always get a little tingling feeling before we do any record. Last time, you know, we, probably our toughest time, we just, uh, where we, we were trying to get off a contract with Atlantic and, mm -hmm. and get, leave our manager, and we had, you know, producers downstairs and lawyers upstairs. <laughs> You know, the ultimate cliche nightmare, you know, it was just uh, really tough. So this one is just, you know, get on with it. This album seemed to me that there was a lot of um, uh, space in there. I don't yeah. know if that was conscious, but I, you know, I, I hear mm -hmm. instruments and it's quite clear. Good. As, I mean, your producer, mm -hmm. was he kind of... Well, you didn't have much, you said you we didn't, didn't really have a, too much. The produce, production just came out Bruce. of the, the songwriting. We, had, we, we worked with an engineer uh, while we were, we were doing that. Uh, and a, a guy, and um, I, th I think uh, I think the space just came out of trying to, you know, uh, just keep things simple as we wrote, and we and then we listened to it and found that that became the style. You know, we just yeah. wanted to, yeah, there's bridges that go to different mm. places. You know, a lot more, so a lot more sonically um, imaginative. I think the record. In mm. simple and clear spaces, but they go to different yeah. places. I think we rediscovered restraint on this record. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. You know, I mean, we, in some ways. You, know, you know, it was always a big thing for us because it was six of us, and all of us always wanted to play everything on every track. Mm. You know, and, and for a, a long time, and then there was a certain period 
through our you know, history where we really did discover restraint and mm. what was important was what you didn't play. You know, and then we, you know, went back to just thrashing away for a few years. <laughs> exactly. And now we're back to and the now back to <laughs> What drives you to continue to want to be successful or to con just to continue to want to play? Yeah. What, um, what drives you to want to keep going for I the next album? Or yeah, I, well, I th just wanted to write, see what the next piece of music could be. I, you know, on this record, when Angie and I first got together, we actually talked about this for like nine months before we even started. We had all our, a lot of arguments beforehand. We actually said, well, you know, we talked a lot about this actual question. Well, why? Yeah. Well, what's the point? Have we said it all? If we, you know, we, we sort of came to the conclusion that we'd like to define it again in a, in a way, but keep it, can we do that and keep it fresh? You know, can we define the band, move ahead at the same time, keep it fresh? That's the real challenge. That's tough. You know? So you were asking what is yeah. in excess? Yeah, what, mm. and, and, and I think we've actually done it. I think we actually, on this record, did what we wanted to do, you know. Being together for 17 years, yeah. I can't help but think that over 17 years there, it, it can't have been a happy marriage all the way. There, no. Have there been times where you thought that, like so many other bands who started out when you did and have fallen by the wayside? There's a few of us left. We sort of came out of that weird generation of, you know, born between punk and disco, and it's and pretty tenacious who are left, the, you know, R.E.M.'s, U2's, Depeche Mode's, you know, but it's not many. I, I don't know. I think all those bands, and I, I, we know them all and I've met them all, and we all are kind of people that, I don't know, we're made of that sort of stuff or something, yeah. you know, we, we basically are friends and we, you know, it, it sounds trite, you know, but it's the way it works, you know, we, we pull each other through, each. We've all had our moments where it's just like, for whatever reason, usually not, not a music thing at all, so much as outside mm. stuff, family or this or, you know. Mm. You know, we started as a gang of mates and then called it in excess and then we kind of attempted to grow up and, and, mm. and, and, and broaden our horizons and have your wilderness periods, let's call it, and, and children or whatever you want to do. And we've given each other enough rope so that we, we're still interested in each other because we're all really different people in many ways. Do you still go out and have a, a, a drink after oh, we yeah. get together? Does it feel like a... Oh yeah, before and after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you know, we still, we still, um, we can still have a really good time together. I mean, you know, we... Basically, we... It's not the Partridge family, I mean, no. we have a <laughs> place. So I think one of it is also Look. being Aussies, we're very... We don't have, I when, don't think we have that preciousness and, and, you yeah. know, harboring and, and playing power games behind backs and, you know, mm. it's just like, look, this is what I think, if you don't like it, so what? You know, yeah. okay, let's work it out, you know? Well, Whack! Mm. And get, when get did you ever see it? the Partridge family go out to the Bain Douche for dinner? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. swap houses and friends and, or and, whatever. You know, and there was always a, you always got this impression there was a band leader. <laughs> <laughs> But there's not with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> Very democratic? Very there's course. no such thing as democratic rock band. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Someone, someone has to lead somewhere along the line. Someone has to And, and we blamed. all take our yeah. turns. You know? Everyone listens to different types of music and, and tries to sort of input their influence into the band. But you have to be very careful too that you don't get too uh, influenced by a particular style of music and then sort of try and instill it within the band because uh, I think that can be quite dangerous with uh, in the fact that by the time your album comes out which is six months maybe down the line perhaps something that's pretty current that you've been listening to is sort of a gone fad these days you know on each record we've tried to cover a lot of territory because everybody just kind of puts their bits mm, in and that's you know, true too. and we go from uh, you know, on each record there's either something that's really sort of the big pop song to the, hmm, that's a very strange track song. Mm. Um, and so we cover a lot of territory. We don't make an album the big concept. It's actually Support. quite interesting in a way releasing a record now because the, the music climate I think probably changed as you <laughs> could tell me more about mm. it than I can even say to you. But when you started there's no actually guarantee of positioning anymore. You know, when you, yeah. you were like the biggest band for MTV for a while there in the States mm. and there was like if there was a guarantee that if you release something it was going to go top yeah. of the charts. Now it's like who knows where you can be because Britain has their own thing going with Britpop blah blah blah. Yeah, America yeah. is, I don't know how you break America well, again, you know. It's like, I think actually there's been a, there's been a period for, for a few years, yeah you're right, where, where 
you actually had to come from Seattle or Manchester or, you know, to, to get played on anything, you know, or to even be noticed, you know, and that's another good reason why we were sort of hanging back to put a record out. And after that, and, we, and the, it's a great thing for, the, for England and the States and stuff, but it, it, once everybody gets over that kind of, you know, uh, it's like blinkers on, you know, wow, we're having a whole resurgence and it, and it sparks everything up, which is great, but we're from Australia. You know, mm -hmm. proud of it, and it's different, and we do our own thing. But what, now that it's all coming down, people, the good thing about it is that is what happens after that, and people's ears and eyes kind of open mm -hmm. up again to a whole new thing, which is, I hope, going to be good for us. Yeah. There's well, a lot of formulas out there. Uh, you know, I think there's people... I just want to turn the f***ing radio and go, like, yes, yeah, this jams. You know, I think there's a lot of people that are 20, in the, you know, who, who've probably grown up with us, you know, like we've grown up with us. Mm. Uh, who, who pr hopefully are going to like this record. I think there's people out here who, who, the last time we made a record, were probably 10 years old. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's weird. And, and so we're a brand new thing to them. And, I, and I'd love them to check it out, steal it, mm. borrow it, whatever, you know. Yeah. James, my oldest son, for a long time, you know, in, 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 in excess, wasn't sort of probably one of the choices of bands. He's a sort of punk. Okay. Kind of guy, you know. But now, I, we, we, I mean, he looks at us as like one of his, you know, icons in, mm -hmm. in a sense. And I think it's really cool. And so does his friends. I mean, when we went and saw Smashing Pumpkins together, I took him in and a whole bunch of his friends, you know. And I, there was my son across, de floating across the mosh pit. You know, <laughs> and, fun, and they played to an excess song. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's so, great. you know, I mean. He was like, ah. Oh. Yeah, you know, and then we went <laughs> back and, You're and okay, guys, Billy and Jimmy, and they were all really cool, and it was really nice, and it makes you think, well, you know, this is great. In terms of pitching yourself, I mean, is that an issue? Pitch, I mean, knowing where to pitch yourself now, in terms of all the other bands that are out there? Yeah. Did, did, have you thought about that with this album, or is it I, I don't know. I think we've always been a trouble yeah. spot, you know, for, for anyway, you know, we've always been... Uh, we've always, you know, we, we're one of the first bands to, to make popular this kind of mixture of styles, you know, funk and rock and roll, whatever you mm. wanted to call it. Yeah. We, uh, it was hard to pigeonhole. Yeah. yeah. So, and we pay, you pay the price for it in some ways, and it's great in other ways, mm. you know. So we've never been too caught up in it, you know. Traditionally, we don't really get influenced by what's going on around us because we just know that, you know, we are an influential band rather than an influenced band. And our influences are, you know, date back a long way to R&B and sort of um, funk, so you know we can sort of pick up little bits and pieces that might, you know, even subconsciously change a few licks here and there. But ultimately, we just you know we just be in excess. I wanted to ask you about whether the kind of tabloid expectation that you exploitation that you'd kind of suffered over the last year mm. had and a half had kind of affected the way this album came together and perhaps the rest of the band. Whether there was a kind of a because you had so much else to contend with. Mm. Here, whether that affected what you were doing Actually, as a musician. It's strange. Yeah, I mean, of course it does. I mean, you know, I, I hope it does. Otherwise, I must be dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> as an artist, you just get up, you know, or whatever pretentious word I want to slap to, onto it. You got to be picking stuff up, whether you like it or not. But you want to make it universal. As far as putting it onto the record, I don't want to make it sort of, uh, you know, poor me. Or you know, I have to make a universal, you know, lyrically, you know, so people get something. Everybody gets something out of it, hopefully. Is that in any way autobiographical from anybody? I mean, you and Andrew. Well, I write, I write all the lyrics, but but um, yeah, oh yeah, it's just just a straight out. I think on this album, I really wanted to do. I don't know. I tend to write a bit cut and pasty, and, and things, you know, things can be a bit obscure, and I like people to read what they like into it. But in this record, I really wanted to make things pretty clear and some songs, straightforward narrative, you know. Just tell her like it is. Mm. Are your private relationships splashed everywhere in Australia because you're in excess? Is there that, that no, inspection no, only of in what medical you're... journals? <laughs> 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 no, not really. Um, <laughs> not uh -huh. really. No. No, you know it's not. It's not as bad. I mean, in England's the only place it's, it's like this really. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I don't really think Australians care that much. It's only because they're told they should. That, you occasionally know, they do. Occasionally right? they do. Stuff yeah. gets picked up. You know. But no, it's it's. I don't know. Hey, look, and the the the, the, the 
Look, in Australia, it's very much a, a, I think we've got a pretty healthy attitude about these things anyway, because this whole star system doesn't have much value in the first place, so mm. it, it doesn't have, you don't have the mechanism to pull something down, so it doesn't make the news. And that's, that's the way it kind of goes, and I think that's a pretty good, that's healthy, you know, I, I love, I can walk around the street and do it all right, and it's like, get up. Becoming a father. Does that, I mean, I know there are other dads in the band, so you've eight, seen... We've got eight children in the band now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a travelling circus. Yeah, absolutely. Well, does, does it mean that you go on tour then to get a good night's sleep? Is that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's the same hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I don't know, Tim's, Tim's got a 15-year-old uh, son, you know, he, he, he's, the, he's the professional here. Yeah, right, so <laughs> you're the encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> People come to yeah, what no. happened when this... Um, I go on tour so I don't have to hear screaming loud guitar all day and, <laughs> and drums and keyboards and trumpet and sax and mm. all the things that my children are learning to play because I already grew up with kids doing that. What about you, Michael? This is going to be a new experience for you leaving, yeah. leaving baby at home. Yeah, no, I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, we'll catch up wherever we can, I guess, but um, yeah. I mean, I'm loving it, enjoying it very much, so. Being a dad. Yeah, it's great. Oh, well, it's, it's hard, you know. It's it's much it's uh, it's much tougher to go to the pizza hut with uh, three kids and their friends than it is to go down to the pub and get through a, a pub brawl, as far as yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's you know you got to be a real man. <laughs> but so uh, you know, I, I love it. It's, uh, it's it brings me a lot of joy. Okay, just just one last question. Elegantly wasted um, mm -hmm. as a as a title. Mm. And I'm thinking, you know, obviously you're from Australia. Mm. Not just wasted a bit. <laughs> that is more of a, an Aussie way of getting by, but elegantly wasted. No, I think it should have been called bloody wasted. <laughs> yeah, it's just having fun with words. Bloody right? well wasted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're just having fun. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's about me. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs>